Hi, welcome back to Drifting and Dreaming. I'm Jim. And in this episode, what we are going to do, it's our maintenance episode, our series, is we're going to change out the impeller on our raw water pump on the Caterpillar 32-weight. And so I'll go through the procedure of uh, removing it and installing a new one. And it's something that's relatively easy to do. Most boaters should be able to know how to do this. We do a lot of our maintenance, a lot of it just to save cost on boating. Um, most mechanics are about $180 an hour and that's the time they leave their shop till they get back. So if it's an hour drive for them, you know, you're looking at almost $400 just in their travel time. So, uh, and then two or three hours or two hours for an impeller or something like that. So this would easily be an $800 bill plus parts at their cost. So follow along. If you have any questions, uh, please, um, uh, ask us in the comments. Again, uh, please like and share, and uh, thank you for watching our channel. Hey, honey, what are we doing on a rainy day? Today, we are going to change the impeller. It's a Sherwood 17,000 series impeller. What the impeller does, it's going to go in here. This is a Sherwood pump. The pump draws seawater from the outside of the boat all the way through here through the strainer into the pump and then up here to the heat exchanger which cools the antifreeze basically the antifreeze goes through the engine to keep the engine cold and then it comes back out through here the ex heat exchanger and then it works its way to, through the um, exhaust so it's a rubber impeller <clears throat> it just spins real fast and it, it pulls water um, they require every uh, once a year at our uh, rate to um, change them out. So I did look at it. It's been a little bit over a year. It's just it takes a couple hours to do this. I have to actually take the pump off and move it because this is an oil cooler here. And it won't come straight out because of the oil cooler. So I'll have to undo a bolt here, take the hoses off, pivot down the pump. I've got a special tool. It's made by Jabsco. We'll reach in there and grabs the impeller and then pulls it out. And then I'll have to put the new impeller in there, put it all back together, and then we'll put water in it and flush, flush it through, make sure I have good water. All right, so you're taking the bolts off the impeller. Okay, so first I shut the valve that uh, brings in salt water. Salt water. Okay, well, fresh water in this case. <laughs> so now all this has water in it. And if I take the cover off, it's just going to come out too quick. So here's a drain plug that I'll remove. And I've already got a, I've got a bucket here that should hold pretty much the volume of water that's going to come out. Oh, I thought it was going to gush out. I guess since you have the drain closed, it just... Yeah, if I opened up the top of the uh, strainer and allow air in, I think I can reach up here. Because it's got a suction on it. But if I open this up, yeah, it'll allow it to come through flow. a little bit faster. Things growing in your strainer. Yeah, I need to clean it. I saw that little we'll seagrass there. I haven't had much Sea. lately in the lakes. Ugh. That's gonna be a little bit too hard to open. So look, let it take its time. There's another drain here. Oh, it's kind of nice to be able to control it, and that way you don't have that water going in your bills. Yeah, I'm not gonna open that. It's just gonna start leaking from there too. This was leaking a little bit, I tightened it. So I'm gonna clean that out and uh, put some sealant on it. We have a spare one on board, um, but this one's working fine. It probably needs to be rebuilt. So I'm gonna get down to Texas and I'll put the other one on it. So the reason you called me down here is because I'm gonna take that water up with me. Yeah, that's correct. <laughs> we can actually just pour it in the back of the bilge. Um, Actually, I may be stuck in here. You may be getting me out of here. My pump, legs underneath the engine. Out All right, next step we went ahead. I'm taking the cover plate off just to check it. And then I'll tilt it over. So there's the bolt, the last bolt. Here's the plate. 
comes off filled o-ring we'll replace that a little bit of groove on the plate but nothing that's sharp because uh, the impeller sits right up against that plate all right you see the uh, old impeller this is a big thing all the <clears throat> All the little blades are still on it, meaning these little blades here. So if they break off, they get sent up into the heat exchanger and they can cause issues by plugging the little tubes in the heat exchanger. So that's a good sign. Um, if you ever run a ground, get a lot of salt, uh, sand and dirt, that can abrade these really good. Or if you run this dry, these will break immediately and cause issues. So they're still flexible. I mean, this one is probably good to continue, but it's been on here over a year. So it's, uh, we've been running a lot. So we are gonna go ahead and replace it. I'll pull it out. I'm gonna have to take these hoses off, take the belt off, drop the pump, pull this out, and then we'll inspect that blade, um, the impeller real well, see if there's any cracking or any other indications. But either way, we're gonna put a new one on there and then that one should be good for another year or so. All right. So I've noticed that maybe you should paint your your floor in your engine room blonde so my hairs won't show when they fall in the builds. It's sort of a grayish white. <laughs> well, I just got my hair stuck while I was filming on the hot water heater, so I have to pull them all off there. I was stuck for a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so we've disconnected the... Um... This plate's a movable, adjustable plate, so I undid that. That released the tension. The belt uh, came off the pulley, so that allowed me to take the bolt out and pivot the uh, pump over, just like doing an alternator, really, on a car. All right, I've got the Jabsco um, impeller puller, and what that does is reaches in and grabs the impeller, and then uh, threaded portion is pushing against the shaft that the impeller is on and it pulls it completely out. It's the first time I've used one of these. Um, I thought these legs would reach all the way to the back side but they really couldn't because the impeller sits flush against the back side so it just grabs a hold. It's like a corkscrew. Kind of like a corkscrew and then these these little legs actually grip, grip into the rubber. Oh, um, they have pointy things on there. And the idea is, I mean, it's, it could cause damage to the impeller, but the impeller is coming out. <clears throat> so there is a keyway in here too, so that might fall out when we get it all the way out. I just remember when I was in the Coast Guard and the engineers that have to go out and get the impeller out while we were underway. and. I would hear a lot of good words. Yeah, you wouldn't want to do that anyway. So there's a keyway. It comes with a new keyway that sits in here on the shaft. And then uh, the fun part is going to be putting the brand new one back on there. Um, let's see where... Looks pretty good. I'm not seeing cracking or dry rot. No, there's some marks there. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely some... But no cracking, no tears. The circular portion is sometimes these will have more of a V shape. So you can see there's a little bit of a flat spot. Well, I could tell that it was here. flat sided if it was in there, like it was pulled further to one yeah, side. Yeah, well, they'll get they they get bent all the way over. All right, and so that continues to turn the whole time that we're underway. Yeah, and pulls water in. The engine is constantly spinning, turning this. So yeah, I'd, the, the book, like I said, heavy industrial <clears throat> with silt and sand and stuff like that says so every six months and then uh, once a year uh, for normal use. And um, yeah, so I'm glad, I mean, our temperatures have always been really good and the flow of water seems to always be fine but you, know, you start getting like defigurations like that. That means, you know, that the rubber's... Coming I mean, to the end of its is, life. This thing is... Yeah, I can see it now. Turned literally 
you know, maybe a million times. I mean, you look at the RPM of this, I'm not sure what the RPM is, but at 1800 in engine RPMs, <clears throat> this is probably spinning pretty darn close to the same. And for a thousand plus hours. All right, I'll clean this all up and inspect the inside of the housing. And then we'll get the new one. I'll show you a trick that I've seen and we'll see how well that works. Hmm. All right, one of the most invaluable tools I have <clears throat> is this little mirror. It really helps out. You can get up there and inspect everything from behind. Everything looks really good inside that pump housing. Actually, I think we'll keep this on for another thousand hours and we'll switch it out. <clears throat> This is just part of the cam. I call it the cam. I believe it's the proper name. It's what's helping deflect the impeller and decreasing the impeller so it pulls water. And that's what that screw is there. It holds it in place. So we'll get that out and then we'll start putting the impeller back in. And what I've seen, and I've used it on smaller impellers before, water pumps and stuff, is they use the zip ties to hold the, decompress the impeller, or compress the impeller, not decompress. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So... Got to hold this in place, get the set screw in there. Not resetting the set screw for the little cam here. A little difficult using the screwdriver with the left hand. Be careful, it's a stainless steel screw and a brass cam. Make sure it's started. There it goes. Any torque down on it or just tight? Yeah, this screwdriver isn't the best. Um, it's better to use a socket, but it's not that tight. That's just a little bit of a. There we go. That's tripping out that screw. <clears throat> okay, so that's held in place. So here's a new impeller. So to get the impeller into this spot, you have to hold all the little blades down all at once, which is almost impossible with the hand. Um, they're turned. You need to make sure that they're turned in the same direction as the old one coming off. So this impeller rotates this way. If you had them opposite, say like that, and then when it rotated, all of these blades would have to flip back the other way and it could cause them to have damage. So you want to get them started in the direct way. And the only way this impeller goes on is with the threads on the outside. This thread is also used, you could put a bolt in there, tighten the bolt, and that'll pull the uh, impeller out. I may just use a bolt next time. It has to be a, a flat head bolt, so when it touches the uh, drive shaft here, it doesn't cause damage. The other thing I want to inspect on here is that the shaft or the bearings and all are free and clear to spin. It feels good. There's no side play in the shaft. I can't feel any movement on here. So it is in good shape. We also have a brand new pulley. So like I said, I think we'll replace all this when I take a lot of this apart when we get back to Texas. I want to touch up and clean up and paint the motor so it looks a lot better. All righty. So everything looks good in here. Let's see if this process works. The key, I'm not going to put the key in until I get it in there because the uh, impeller will stay in place while I turn it and then I'll line up the um, keyway and we have a brand new key for it. But once I get it lined up, 
I'll be able to slide it in there on the shaft. And I did use a, um, it's a Teflon gel and a, a corrosion eliminator. It's a anesthesia lubricant also, just in the key way of this, so it comes out easy. This one came out real easy too, the old one, but that doesn't hurt, and that'll help lubricate that up a little bit. All right, so here we go. I'm going to start placing it in there. Okay, and I can see in here, it's getting close to the shaft. So once it starts here, come through, and we're going to clip this first set of tie wraps. And then I'm going to rotate it in the direction that it's supposed to travel. You don't want to use any petroleum-based oil on that. Um, you can use silicone or soap and water. I'm going to try without any of that first. And if we can't get it going, my assistant will get me some soapy water. Why? Because your assistant does dishes and she knows where the soap and water is in? She knows where the soap and water belongs. All right, so it's on the drive shaft. Almost needed a third set. start going in a little bit better. I would not want to have to do this underway. That's one reason. It's worth to change these out when they're required to or even before when you're in port because underway of course it would be rocking and rolling. Be hot. Be very hot mm -hmm. down here. Mm -hmm. So I'm just sliding the zip tie further out. I don't want to cut this one yet because then it'll. I'll get that fin right below where the zip tie is, the tie itself, to help orientate it back in the right direction. This one here. This is where the chamber opens up. So that's okay. where it's. I want to be very careful. I'm using a screwdriver. I want to make sure I don't damage the new impeller. It's almost there without soapy water or silicone. I figure I'd try it without it just because I don't want to get that stuff and take me. Yeah, it's not going to be easy to do that. I just got to take my time and go all the way around. Pull the zip tie out a little bit further because it's what's holding it from going all the way in. The impeller is a zip tie. It's probably about to pop off too. I use two zip ties because I just didn't have one long enough. All right, we're getting close. I'm just hesitant to cut the zip tie off because I think it's really helping the impeller go in. If I cut it off, then it's just gonna be harder to push the last about three quarter inch in. All right, where it's coming off. Is that Alright, we got the impeller in. It took a little bit and had to kind of tap it a little bit harder. I did use the old impeller and was hitting on that to set it. So I think it still needs to go in just 
a little bit. So I've got the keyway in there. I'm going to turn it. Make sure I'm turning it the right direction. I'll push it in as I rotate it. Because you want them to be, you don't want them to be proud of the casing. So it has to be just inside the flush. Yeah, I think it it bottoms out on the other end, but you never know how far that is. I think we're pretty darn close. You can see on the inside of this is definitely has some wearing on it. And that's from, you know, just the rubber catching it. But it's not leaking, so you can see. Ready. So you can see the the wear is in a complete circle. That's where that brass cam is here, because as it's spinning, it it's sh shallowing the rubber, causing more flow, and so that's where the water gets pushed up out of here into the engine. So I'll clean that a little bit with emery cloth. Make sure we can seal on it, and the keyway is now. Pushed all the way in. I can look in the mirror here. I'm looking all the way down. And it looks like I'll use a zip tie to try to judge it. Is that the impeller is all the way down at the? It's seated down in there. It's seated at the other end here. There's no. No gap that I can see at the other end, so I think we're good. Um, because there's no bolt that holds this impeller down, it's the case itself is what's holding it down. So it just it's I don't want to say it's compressed, it's just inside that and it spins. Mm -hmm. So there's probably a little bit of room on each side, yeah, not enough for. If there's a lot of pressure on this plate, it's gonna eventually work its way in. But I think we're, I think we're in as far as it's gonna to wanna to go. So you just have to remember next time you have to either do measurement by feel or. What well, was flush, flush. I, mean, I took it out, so. Alrighty, so uh, I'm gonna clean up the drain plug here with the brass brush. I'll put some uh, sealer on it. We'll put that back in. I've got the new O-ring, the other item in the kit is this plug. This plug keeps the keyway in position. In position. You can see it's set for the keyway. So that goes in here. And that's what's sitting on the outside here. And so um, That'll keep the keyway from coming out and then grinding a hole into the plate. Here's a new O-ring and there's my plug. All right, here's our drain plug. I'm gonna go ahead and um, go ahead put that in. It's not gonna interfere with the plate. So I've got some thread sealer on it. Okay, so we've got the cap retainer for the keyway. I've got this the gasket on there. I used a silicone lubricant because that gasket, just like you know, it's it's a little bit bigger. So you put it in there, it wants to pop out. So I've got the silicone holding it there. I've got the plate, and I've made sure the plate went back on in the same direction. Um, on the plate itself, it sh points to the cam, which is over this direction, but obviously the previous times that this was placed on and off, it was placed 
um, in the wrong position. Um, so the wear on the inside of that plate is off, but um, I'm putting it back on the exact way it came on, so that way the wear is the same as where the impeller is, <clears throat> rotates, and where the cam is. So um, as long as it goes back in the same direction, the wear will be fine. All right, so I'm putting the retainer bolts on the plate, holding it up against the gasket the entire time, because if that gasket pops loose, then a good chance this will leak and we'll have to take it all apart to put that gasket back on. And I'll get these hand tight, and then we'll torque them down a little bit. Just... And this will be another spot that we leak check. Also, when I took this apart, I looked into the hoses, um, intake hose and discharge hose. There was no buildup of any type of um, barnacles or anything like that. So that's a good indication that the rest of the system, the raw water system, is in good shape and doesn't have buildup of marine life in it. Position. Oh, so I can move and you pick can, up my glasses. <laughs> All right. So you just tighten those down. Yep. Yeah, so take these down. I don't believe there's any torque setting. I'm just gonna evenly cinch them down and then put a little bit of torque on each one, so you know the plate's going even. I have block root shoes on them. All right. So these all been tightened, all three. Our drain plugs tighten. Our cam retaining is there. Now I'm going to turn it. Okay, it rotates. So can you see it down in that hole? Yep, you can see the you can see the impeller in there rotating. Oh, I can see it. Cool. All right. So now. One thing is put the fan belt back is in. We're going to put the retaining bolt for the pump itself on the bracket. And I loosened both of them because that's what uh, it pivoted on this one, just like say when you adjust your radiator or automobile to adjust to take that off. So. All right, so we're gonna tighten this one on. Get these two tightened down real tight, and then we will put the belt back on. The belt in, uh, is in uh, good shape. To replace the belt, I'd have to take off the hydraulic motor. Um, what I think I'm gonna do is I do have a spare one. We're gonna replace the um, grommet. The, the um, I want to call it a bushing that's uh, between the engine and the hydraulic motor. We ordered one and picked up that up on Friday because this one's slowly starting to deteriorate. I'm going to take that off. I think I'll go ahead and put a brand new belt on there. But I'm going to put a spare belt in there and then uh, I'll tie it up, wire tie it. So if we blow a belt while we're underway, I don't have to take the whole front of the engine off. I just uh, loosen this up, put the new belt on it. Uh, they do that in a lot of um, actually helicopters that uh, um, I know the Dolphin that I flew, they would put uh, one or two spare ones on there because it actually um, went around the tail drive shaft. So, um, so if their conditioner belt broke, they'd actually have to take the tail drive shaft off. So having spare belts up there, they wouldn't have to take the drive shaft off. They would just reach up and snap it with the zip tie, put it back on their condition compressor, and then back in service. So sometimes it's a, a neat process to have a spare belt already in place and wire tied so you don't have to disassemble other drive shafts, or in this case, a hydraulic pump. All righty. So the belt is on the harmonic balancer. I'm going to put it on the bigger pulley first and up on the smaller pulley. It'll be easy to attach everything. 
What if I get stuck down here with you? Well, we can check for water leaks. <laughs> well, it started. All right. So one way to make sure the belt goes back on, one that it fits, but looking at the pulleys that are all shiny and silver. I'm not gonna be able to see that, I don't think. No. All right. So, these mounting bolts just got to get a little bit looser because it doesn't want to slide back where it was. Here. Loosen it up. There we go. <laughs> I don't think I do, so we'll just use the wrench. Alright. The old fashioned way. I kind of like stuck in here. All right, so now the belt is back on all three pulleys. Now we've got to set the tension on it. Okay, so there's three, three mounting bolts here. And there's about an eighth inch deflection on this uh, last, on this bottom. That's the longest run of the belt is the bottom here. So I'm going to pull it tight. And Start tightening these bolts. Get them a little bit tight. That's still not enough to pull it a little bit more. What I may have to do just like an alternator. There's a place in here to put a screwdriver and to pull it over. Then you can see it pull over. All right, so right about there is what the tension was. And I'll recheck the book because it does say uh, the tension at a certain distance. If I remember right, it was an eighth inch, which is not a whole lot of flex in the belt. This is a nice thing, offset 12 point wrench that reaches around and behind different brackets and places you're working at. So, all right, check an alternator about the same distance here. I think we're good with that, so I'm going to go ahead and cinch it down. And then our next step is to reconnect the hoses. And then we'll turn on, open up the sea chest, and refill the water in it. And we'll use a water hose for that. That way it's primed. And then we'll start her up. Check the belt. 
Okay, so bolt, 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 bolt. Let me take that out. I had to move. Let me recheck these bolts here. Okay, get a little bit out of that one. Okay, that one's solid. The three on the plate are done. The drain is done. The bolt here, I've reclamped this one. This hose didn't want to come off easy, so I didn't want to twist it, break it, because it's got a good seal. And it allowed me to flex it over. This one is a little bit newer. And it came through. And so you could see the inside of this. It's got some slime in there. But no, it's not full of um, barnacles or anything like that. So that's a good indication everything's clear. Alright, so it goes back on this way. It's always good to have your clamps. Two opposite clamps. Direction, two clamps, definitely. In the opposite direction. I'm going to move them all the way up. Out of the way. So it goes back on like here. I've already cleaned the base of that. Rotate it. And it goes right back up to where it was painted before. Just kind of making sure it's sitting comfortable and not uh, I'm sitting comfortable than more than I am <laughs> all right it's all right I'm wedged in here pretty good okay so one two three four clamps make sure before we get them all tightened there's not a whole lot of space between here and here Put a clamp so i'm putting them right back where they were and i don't think that's an issue the hose is compressed there sometimes you know you put them on a different spot but there's just not enough real estate on there to do that big thing is making sure that they're perpendicular to the fitting that you're clamping on all right This will definitely be one spot we look at for leaks. And then the bottom one. And it's all the way all the way down. Put a little sticker in the. Yeah, we'll put the date and the engine hours too on it. Okay, this one was last done in. Yeah, March. March thirty-one, twenty-three. We're really over the time on it. It's just I wanted to be in a spot that if we had issues, we would be able to nice. either replace that whole pump that we have a spare, or hoses or something. And since we have a rental car this week, or we will. And a dealer nearby but it's good to see I mean it uh, definitely went beyond the recommended distance and time the date and the time and the hours but we will just change it out every year calendar year even if you don't use the boat as much as we do they recommend the calendar time I guess it's just for the because it's always full of water and stuff and it could be the material composite can break down. Okay, so these are tight. <laughs> Sorry. I'm right there on top yeah, of you. Maybe I didn't tighten these up just as I could have. Alright, tight. Two are tight here, two are tight here. One, two, three bolts for mounting. The belt looks good. Two pump mounts are good. Again, the set screw, the three plate screws, and then the drain plug. I'm going to go ahead and open up the sea chest here. We'll probably a little bit of water because the water level is about here 
I saw what we're going to do is we're going to get my hose. We're going to clean that strainer first, and then I'm going to introduce water into here and backflow into here. So I want to not run this dry. Correct. All right. Clear up some of our tools and get the but water flowing. When I put something together, I always, always have like two or three things left. Where's your extra parts at? Uh, let's see. <laughs> A key white left. Oh, and then Poller. That's somewhere behind me. And we replaced that keyway. So there's a keyway in there. That's yes. Uh, if you ever put a new pump on, make sure there is an impeller in there. <laughs> a friend that installed a brand new pump. And it came in the box. It came in the box, sealed up, and put it on there and ran it. But there was actually no impeller in there and overheated the engines. But they caught it soon enough that it didn't cause any major damage. Oh, no. but they had to limp back on one engine. Good thing they had another engine. Yeah, make sure there's an impeller, you know. Yeah, it just, they should have put a bright orange sticker on the box saying no impeller. No, no. that's what you'd think. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn this around. So our next boat's going to have a stand-up engine room. It'll be easier. <laughs> I guess I can't turn it around. So here I am. I'm going to have to fling from the nagel my way out. <laughs> All right, you can go ahead and stop because I can get it. Chef's not going to give me my. <laughs> I stuck. You just need me to clean that up. So, yeah, clean that up, and I'll start filling it with water. Okay. Do you want me to clean the lid too? It's kind of scummy. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for watching and taking time out of your day to watch us do a little bit of maintenance on the motor vessel Cetus. We will be making more maintenance videos, and they will come out on Fridays. Have a great day.